I don't really know what this thing is, it's other than a really beat up, fucked up looking teddy bear. I mean, look at this thing. Why would you not want this? <laughs> What's up GQ, I'm Aaron Paul, and these are my 10 essentials. My favorite prop that I own from Breaking Bad. This pink teddy bear was introduced in the first episode of the second season. It kind of just kind of popped up throughout the entire second season and it quickly became my favorite prop that I wanted to steal. They wouldn't let me steal it, but Vince Gilligan, our fearless leader of the show, knew that this was my favorite one. And when we wrapped the series, Vince uh, surprised me with this, this charming little guy. Once I got my eye on this pink teddy bear in the second season, I realized that I was gonna try to steal a lot of shit from that show. I won't talk about what I stole because I don't want Sony and AMC to know that I have it. Sorry. A pair of car keys. Why they're essential is this car I actually picked up on my very first date with my wife, Lauren. You know, we met at a music festival. We had our first kiss on a Ferris wheel. You know, I started telling her that night that I was gonna marry her one day. I was obsessed. I hit her up and asked her if she wanted to meet me in Vegas for a dinner and a show, keep it innocent, and then the next day pick up a car and uh, drive it back. And so we went, had the best night of our lives. We won 16 grand at the blackjack table. We then jumped into a cab, told the cab driver to take us to the nearest chapel to get married. You know, you think you're in Vegas, it's Saturday night, it's not too late. You think these chapels are always open, but we try to open up the doors and the doors are locked. We decided maybe this was uh, not in the cards for us that night. Anyways, these car keys sort of represent our first date and the love that we have for each other. We just celebrated our 10 years of marriage. To be super cheesy, I just decided to see if I could get a great personalized plate for the car. First thing I, I typed in was, I love you, and that was available. That just shows you the world that we're living in. Like, I just, I can't believe that that was available. So if you see a little blue Cobra driving around with the license plate that says, I love you, no, it's true. Okay, so this next essential item, it's actually a pair of meteorites. And so it starts with this one. This was a gift from my wife. We're always looking up in the stars. You know, we would just open up a bottle of wine and talk for hours while just staring up at the universe. Anyways, one of my roommates at the time, he was convinced that 2012 was the end because he was convinced that, well, the, the end of the Mayan calendar, we're gonna die. And I'm like, you are out of your mind. And so I decided to make him start believing that meteorites were slamming into our backyard in North Hollywood. And it started with this one. I had dug like a, a little crater and uh, I put this inside of it and I put a bunch of dirt around the crater so it looked like, you know, it caused like an impact. Um, very amateur hour, by the way. And he's like, what is this? And he pulls it out and he's like, I fucking knew it, this is a meteorite. These things are hitting the ground. I'm telling you, the world is ending and it's gonna, this is how it's gonna end. I'm like, oh my God, it's working like way, way better than I had anticipated. I had to level up, you know, I had to go to the meteorite shop in Santa Monica. I spent way too much money on this thing. Cut to just, you know, like a couple weeks later, I dig a giant, crater. I come up with this contraption that made a very loud noise in the backyard. He comes running out out of his bedroom and his boxers. He then, of course, starts losing his mind again. He's like, I told you to his girlfriend. They start getting in an argument. Cut to, I'm not joking, cut to about a week later, I'm watching a Giants football game. It goes to the local news. There was footage in my backyard that was shot by my buddy's girlfriend. She brought it to the news and she claimed it happened in her backyard and it made the six o'clock news and the 11 o'clock news. Fake news, people. Fake news. 
Okay, so this next essential item uh, was a gift from my wife. It's from Tom York, who's the singer of Radiohead. And the reason why she gave me this is I did a fundraiser for her nonprofit called Kind Campaign that coincided with the finale of Breaking Bad. I wanted to do an event for the, the public so they could be invited and watch the series finale with the entire cast and crew. And we did that and we raised about $1.6 million for Kind Campaign. And Kind Campaign, you know, my wife started years and years and years ago. She travels the country, talks to young girls about the effects of bullying within their school hallways. So she wanted to present me with something that she knew I would really love. And so she tracked down Tom. He wrote some of the lyrics to one of my favorite songs, Fake Plastic Trees, and turned it into like a little art piece. And then at the top it says, this is especially for Aaron and it cost a million dollars. 1.6 million dollars to uh, be precise, but who's counting? This is a bracelet that my daughter actually just made me for Father's Day. She's five years old and when she sits down, she really sits down and focuses on things that she wants to sort of accomplish and she just loves her mommy and daddy and her brother so much. She constantly makes me things, colors me things. She's just such a talented young lady and I'm obsessed with her story. I love you, baby. Thank you, please keep making me bracelets. Okay, oh! To keep it in the theme of children, this essential is the very first toy I bought my daughter after she was born. She instantly fell in love with it. It was constantly in her mouth. We kind of nicknamed her Bubbles because she just constantly was bubbling, drooling on this thing. Definitely a lot of miles, but it is now on my bookshelf in our little library. This is a beautiful reminder. You know, my wife married me thinking I did not want to have kids. I realized that after playing a father on a series out in New York, it was the first time I allowed myself to kind of be in that headspace of becoming a dad. It just sort of changed my mind. And I remember sitting Lauren down. I finally told her that I wanted to have kids and she didn't think she heard me right. And she wanted me to repeat myself. And so I did. And then she just started crying. Anyways, this is a beautiful reminder of how happy I am that I changed my mind. Sorry, is it getting too heavy in here? Now we'll get into the lighter things. Um, bring out the booze. Man stuff, drinking mezcal. A bottle of Dos Hombres. This is bottle one from our very first batch, batch one. It's a company that my friend Brian Cranston and I started it. It sort of represents the relationship that Brian and I uh, have. He quickly became one of my closest friends in the world when I started shooting Breaking Bad. He became my mentor. I have just learned so much from this man on screen and off. I just love the man. I mean, he's my son's godfather. We're very, very close. And when we were trying to figure out the name for the company, we just couldn't beat Dos Hombres. It's just simple, two guys, you know, we're blue collar background. Both him and I grew up with really no money in our pockets. It's just about kind of two guys showing up, going to work. To be honest, we haven't made a single penny off of this company. We only hemorrhage money into the company. We know how to do business, people, um, but <laughs> we're very proud of what we're doing, so. Um, if you like mezcal, drink some. Books. I think it's very important for people to read. I think it feeds the soul. These three books were written from one of my favorite authors who also happens to be one of my best friends in the world, Jedediah Jenkins. This first book is called To Shake the Sleeping Self. He decided that he wanted to ride a bike from the Oregon coast to the tip of Patagonia, and he did it in a year and a half. He started at the exact spot that his parents ended their journey 
journey across America. He is a proud, beautiful gay man that when he started this journey, he didn't really know or understand his sort of place in life because he grew up in a very religious household and his mother just was not having it. Leads me to his third book that is just about to, this book is also amazing, but I'm just now starting this book. It's not out yet, but it follows a journey between him and his mother across America in a car, trying to see if they can survive their own differences. And I just started it and it's just so beautiful. I'm just so proud of this guy. So I had to bring it. my Leica Q2. I uh, would not consider myself a photographer by any means. I'm not pretending to be one, but I needed a, a nice camera once I started having babies. This thing comes with me uh, everywhere that my kids are. I'm obsessed with them and also encourages me to print out photos. I don't like having things just kind of live on my phone or in the cloud. I like to take photos and try to print out as many as possible. I do autofocus, you know, there you go. Oh my God, I missed you, there you go, perfect. Yeah, it's great. And it just makes you look like you know what you're doing. This next essential item is a candle. I burn too many candles. There's candles burning in pretty much every room of my house. I travel with candles. I always travel with candles and music. It's just a must for me. Typically it is a diptyque. And so I always go in there and come out with an embarrassing amount of bags. My wife, uh, she makes fun of me constantly, but the house smells good. All right, GQ, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.